Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we'll talk about the so-called circling approach. From time to time you'll get in contact with an airport that has only uh, an approach into one landing direction. Uh, that is mostly due to uh, terrain around the airport. And so when you have too much tailwind for the landing runway, the instrument landing runway, then you will have to fly a so-called circling approach. Now, quite often, a circling approach takes place at very low altitude. Um, the lowest altitude uh, or height above the airport uh, can be 600 feet, for example, uh, and that is very low. Um, so you'll come across uh, these possibilities sometimes. However, very often airports will give you a uh, predefined circling height uh, that will take care of any obstacles uh, that you might overfly. And so in this pattern, you have to maintain visual contact not only with the terrain, but also with the landing runway. If you lose sight of it, then that means you have to go around. Now, there's also circling approaches with so-called uh, prescribed tracks. And there the rules regarding visual contact to the runway. But this will not be covered in this video. Let's first have a look at an airport where there is only one instrument landing runway that is runway 30 here in Ljubljana and uh, from there if the wind conditions are such that you have to land in the opposite direction then there is only one option and that is to fly a circling approach and there it says that you can fly a circling approach however it is not authorized northeast of the airport and that is obviously because of high terrain there so now we have to have a look at what altitude we have to fly the circling pattern. There we can see we have two different ones. One is for max speed 180 knots indicated and that's 2610 feet. The other one is for maximum of 205 knots indicated and that will be 2710. That will give us a respective height above the threshold of 1336 feet and um, for the higher one at 1436 feet. So let's have a look how we would fly such an approach. And uh, initially we would be coming in at the um, instrument approach runway, in this case 30. And the configuration would be flaps 3, gear down and spoilers armed. However, if of course the circling altitude is fairly high or the height of the threshold is fairly high, uh, let's say above a thousand feet, then you should consider a different configuration, for example, with gear up and flaps 2 um, on the A3 192021. So that's good for less uh, engine RPM, uh, less noise, uh, etc. etc. I would also use the autopilot uh, as much as possible to reduce workload in the circling, and you'll have to use it until you start the final descent to the landing runway. In this case, for example, on the base leg. Okay, so we're in the approach, descending towards our circling altitude. In our example, 2,700 feet. Uh, that is because I rounded up to the next 100 feet value. So there we let the autopilot level off the aircraft. And then when the circling conditions are satisfied, we select track FPA, maintain visual reference. Um, normally we need visual reference, as I said, to the landing runway all the time and also to the surrounding terrain. And then we proceed towards the downwind leg um, and that we do by um, turning left or right depending on the circling direction by 45 degrees. This uh, track will be flown for 30 seconds and then we'll turn again to the outbound track. And these 30 seconds will give you approximately two and a half miles lateral offset from the runway. Next up is the beam landing threshold position. There we have to start to chrono, and that is to have a timing available for the outbound uh, leg. And the timing goes as follows. Um, normally you have three seconds per 100 feet height above the landing threshold, in our case, 1400 feet, which then equates to 42 seconds. Now I would suggest that above 1000 feet height above the uh, landing threshold, uh, do a wind correction and so for every knot of tailwind for example you subtract one second if you have headwind which normally you wouldn't but should you have headwind then add one second per knot headwind component 
Below 1000 feet height, I would omit those uh, wind corrections uh, because then the whole procedure itself regarding base turn, etc., etc., will become very hectic, which you should avoid. And you have to realize that this procedure is laid out so that we get into a good um, position regarding the final descent towards the landing threshold. Uh, when I mean a good position, it's a position from which you can have a normal uh, three degree profile with normal descent rates and without you know bigger corrections. And uh, what I mean by that, you can see from the side view. So the optimum would be that we turn to final and we have two red and two white lights uh, from the parpies. Slightly worse would be the uh, slightly lower position, so three red and one white. However, that could be uh, corrected very simply by reducing the vertical uh, rate of descent. Should you see three white and one red, then you would have to increase the rate of descent slightly to capture the optimum uh, two red, two white path. So that range between three red and one white or three white and one red, or most optimal, obviously two red and two white, uh, anywhere in that range is fine. Uh, it gets more difficult, however, should you see four white lights or four red lights. Because then you do not exactly know how much you have deviated from the optimal path. And so more drastic measures are required. Uh, like, for example, with the four red lights, uh, do a level off uh, to regain the path. Now, with the four white lights, well, again, like I said, if you do not know how much you are too high, um, and also you're restricted by the maximum descent rate below 1000 feet height, it would be 1000 feet per minute. And that makes it maybe difficult to regain that optimum path. So again, sticking to that um, published procedure helps you to get into uh, the optimal path anywhere between uh, you know, deviating by one light. So three white, one red or three red, one white. So enough of the theory, let's uh, watch it in practice. So here I've uh, programmed the MCDU. I've also inserted the uh, identifier for the landing runway 1-2 and also the performance page obviously is filled out completely. So this circling is going to be in 2700 feet and so that's the 2610 MDA rounded up to the next 100 feet. And that gives us around about 1400 feet height above the landing uh, runway threshold. The A320 has a uh, particular thing with the landing performance. So here in the secondary flight plan, I've already inserted the um, opposite runway. So runway one, two. Uh, and uh, for now, however, we have to fly the instrument procedure for runway three, zero, uh, which is the ILS approach. Uh, however, I'm using localizer mode and also the uh, vertical speed mode. And that is uh, due to the fact that this or these modes will allow me to more easily level off. Uh, if we had glide slope actually captured, we wouldn't be leveling off at 2,700 feet. Uh, the airplane would just continue down towards the runway. So we are approaching the level of circling altitude. And also we are preparing to start our left turn. And so I pre-select the 45 degree lateral offset and so once the turn comes I just need to pull on the uh, track knob. Above. Minimum. There we are now selecting track and the aircraft starts turning left to get to the outbound leg. Once the wings are level again, we'll start the chrono for the 30 seconds outbound.
There we go, 30 seconds are over, so we turn now right again to the outbound track. And then uh, we'll look out for the uh, beam position of the landing threshold. And uh, don't forget to reset the chrono. So a beam position will start the chrono and since we do have a little bit of tailwind we'll subtract uh, around about 10 seconds from the original value uh, because we have about 10 knots tailwind. Now we do have config 2 which is fine so once we hit the uh, base turn then we'll lower the landing gear and uh, get the aircraft into a final configuration. Uh, don't forget to activate the secondary flight plan so that we have the landing runway 1-2 now active. And that means uh, we can use the managed speed mode uh, later on for the final approach. Now we've reached the point where the outbound time has elapsed and so we turn right, lower the landing gear and like I mentioned before, switch off the autopilot uh, is a good point now. And then uh, we'll get the aircraft into final configuration. Now what I'd like to do is put the uh, progress page uh, in front of me so that I see the distance to the landing threshold. So now we can see it's 3.3 miles. And that helps me to judge how I am doing regarding the optimum profile. Now we can see the Parpy, I think it's three white, one red, uh, which is good. It's a good position. So we just uh, increased the rate of descent a little bit. And then uh, once we turn final, we'll uh, look again and try and establish ourselves onto the optimum path with the two red, two white lines. Five. Also, trying to get myself nicely established onto the center line, so it's always better to undershoot a little than overshoot. Uh, overshoot correction is uh, pretty complicated sometimes. And now you can see, yep, we, uh, we're lucky we just nailed it at two red, two white. And so now we just make sure we maintain that three degree uh, glide path down to the touchdown zone. Uh, you can memo landing or blue, so the checklist is completed for landing. So you see that pattern really helps you to get into the right position for the final approach. Everything's so relaxed. There is no bigger uh, deviations, nothing, uh, you know, no bigger corrections required. Uh, very nice. on the ground spoilers reverse green and diesel so let's now have a look at uh, the next scenario where the circling will take place a lot lower so it's exactly the same pattern uh, this time however we are doing it in 600 feet height and that's the lowest circling minimum that you can fly um, now, according to our SOPs, you have to realize that you do not have to fly it so low. So let's say like today we have good visibility, then you should adjust the height a little bit. For example, you could put a thousand feet height as your minimum. Um, so you're flexible to do so. Uh, it's just the absolute lowest one you can fly the circling is 600 feet. So here we go again at the break of point, but again, uh, now at 600 feet height. Uh, it does look a bit uh, scary sometimes, I think, uh, especially for the passengers. 
uh, when you look out the, the windows, uh, they, uh, they would surely be wondering what's happening. So just saw me activate the secondary flight plan again, so that we have the ability to go into managed speed mode later on, uh, which does help because it does adjust the approach speed for any wind gusts. The timing now remains the same, 30 seconds to get again the two and a half mile offset, and that will then help us a little bit with the base um, of the of the pattern. So we have a, just a few seconds to look outside, uh, you know, judge the um, position towards the uh, runway, etc. Now remember what I said, uh, that since we're below 1,000 feet height, I'm not going to adjust the outbound timing by much. Um, so I'll probably turn around about 15 seconds into the pattern. And then, uh, yeah, everything's going very quickly now. Okay, time's up. Autopilot off. We'll turn base. Now, when you're this far down, it's extremely important that you do not misjudge the turn to final. And again, rather you undershoot just a tad than overshoot. Let's put it this way. If you overshoot the final turn here, that's it. It's going to end in the go around. So again, we're, well, let's say lucky, too red, too white. And uh, going to concentrate on just keeping that uh, descent rate nicely going. Uh, concentrate on uh, hitting the center line. 300. There we go. 300 and below. You're supposed to have 15 uh, degree bank maximum. And there we go. On path. 200. And so we continue now down. Nice and steady. Just like before. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, 10, 5. That's safely down again. Spoilers, reverse, green, and descent. And that's it. That's all there is to the circling approaches. Um, I hope I've uh, made uh, a couple of things a bit clearer for you guys. And uh, yeah, if you want, go ahead and practice, practice, practice. And then you won't uh, break a sweat once you are faced with such a circling approach. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. As always, stay safe and uh, happy landings. And I'll see you in the next one.